Hey, what's up? It's uh, another, I guess, unboxing. And this one is a triple one. Well, kind of. Um, I've actually unboxed this guy. And we're going to take a look at a couple other things here. Uh, so let's get into it. So, first one is the SBD. I believe it's the SBDC 111. This is the uh, Willard reissue. It's one of the... Um, well, there's several versions, but okay, these are the, I guess, the latest ones that are a little bit smaller uh, than that uh, original one that came out. Well, the re original reissue, limited edition, that was the SLA something, which was about, f I think it's one millimeter larger than the actual vintage mill Willard, uh, about 45 millimeters. And so this is about 42.7 or 8, something like that. Um, they're pretty close to 43, uh, comparable to an SKX size, I guess, because I believe SKXs are, uh, uh, actually not 42, they are actually closer to 43, but anyways, take as a way of making a magic case. Anyways, I've always had my eye on, uh, on this color in particular. This is one of the first two that came out, um, when we started making these. These are slightly smaller and slimmer versions of the original, or I guess the reissue, however you want to call it. Anyways, the other one is the black version, but um, I always was drawn to this green um, ever since it came out. And I just kept holding off on it and buying something else. And uh, I was very close to getting one of those new slim case ones, which are like kind of like a slimmer turtle case. And they are supposedly the slimmest Prospects diving watch to date. It's like 12 point something millimeters thick. Well, I guess it's a standard. I forget how thick this one is. I mentioned in the review, and this is by far not a new watch or model. Although this may be one of the latest kind of updates to it. And I'll explain it in a moment. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, usually a lot of the Prospects, they are at least 13 or... 13 and a half or so, I think. Uh, so yeah, the newer ones are slimmer, but as you'll see real quickly, I mean, this, they do a way of, Seiko has a way of just making the case just blend in, the way the case curves, undercuts, and it's a cushion case, it's very comfortable. And and you can see, I'm trying to get a further angle distance, it's just, it's where it's pretty low and slim anyways. I don't, wouldn't call this thick at all. But uh, yeah, I was going to get this, the new slim case ones where they have that date at the 430 and they came in a white, like a black, white dial with a black bezel, a classic black version. And I think, what's the third one? I think there's one with like a, a gilt dial. And uh, so it has a little bit of gold mixed in. Uh, I really wanted to get the, I was going to get the white dial version, but I have, a white dial diver coming in with a black bezel that won't be to the end of the year that's just pre-ordered uh, i did get my house in uh shark diver 38 that has a full loom white dial and it's got black bezel so i kind of didn't need that and although that one was really nice the uh the new slim case however you want to call it uh diver prospect diver um I think it looked a little bit too conservative, like it was maybe too petite, and I don't know, some people might like that, but this is a very kind iconic profile, case profile, and I think this this way this case kind of flares out and makes the um, crown guards here is a very unique feature also, and I don't know, adds a bit more character. Um, yeah, there is some asymmetry there, but um, I kind of like a bit of asymmetry. Uh, anyways, this is basically like the very first reissue, but the uh, ever since then they uh, they updated some of these ISO standards, and one of that includes needing a a loom pivot the three. So originally this didn't have any loom around the three area, and now they added it here, and they did that with the. 62, or some people call it the 63 Moss, whatever, you know, the 
very popular one. I, I used to have the SPDC, uh, is it 105 or 107? I can't even remember. It's the brown, I call it the cappuccino dial with a kind of grayish, dark grayish bezel with the gilt. Really nice. Um, but that also did not have it there. But I think after, uh, I guess when did they start this? Late last year, 2021, somewhere around there. I think they started updating all their production models with that uh, Lumpur here. It's going to be part of the Prospects line and uh, Diver certified or, you know, 200 with the ISO rating. Then they all have to have that now. Um, I wasn't like a big fan of that because it's just, you know, all the loom uh, pips or loom markers sit within a certain distance and circumference from the center, right, to fit in that space. And obviously, they didn't, they couldn't move the date wheel, um, so they just kind of forced it out here, which is kind of on the outside. It's a little bit weird, but uh, I guess it is what it is. I mean, overall, I mean, the way the crystal is beveled and has some distortion you kind of lose it anyways a bit and I said and at least the date window kind of matches the general size and color of the opposing marker here not exactly but from a distance good enough I mean the only other thing they could have done is with some of the like that slim case is put like a date down here at the 430 and have a complete and um, matching uh, loom index here at the three but uh seiko isn't really good at doing color matching um in the sense that they don't really do it as far as i'm aware of uh, they will just use basically white or a black date disc and that's pretty much it and i guess they'll find whatever looks most appropriate to match the color dial i don't know what you can go with here because this green is kind of like a medium i mean white will be lighter and black will be too much darker i don't know i think if they put it there unless they matched it it just wouldn't look right so i guess this is about as good it's going to get uh the way they did it here and that's fine and i'm happy to note um that uh, i did ask them to if they could and i got this from secure they're a great place to get uh jdm or just japanese watches and they have a uh, really competitive prices and uh, good, pretty good inventory and mix of stuff from Seiko's to Citizens or other Japanese brands, but I primarily go to for Seiko's. And uh, I asked them just when I put the order in in the notes just to double check if they could to make sure they had the best example possible that was aligned. And um, I don't know if it's by chance or did they actually do it. But as you can see, this actually is all aligned. I mean, you can't really mess up the um, the inner or, or the chapter ring that's kind of printed on the dial because it's printed on. Well, I guess it could mess that up, but that is very unlikely. The minute markers are around the outside. They are going to should line up just perfectly with everything else, as you can see. Always now, the only trouble is the bezel um, that could still potentially get screwed up. But I haven't heard of anybody mention anything bad about like some of Seiko's most recent production. In fact, this seems to be actually uh, perhaps a little bit better, like the new GMT Seiko 5 Sports, right? Um, seems to be pretty nice. Everything seems, I haven't heard of alignment issues and even the up the quality of their Jubilee bracelet. Um, the slim case one, so that the people that do have it, I haven't seen anybody report any misalignment issues, so that's good. And and you can see on my bezel, it's got that nice, good action, very nice Seiko feeling, uh, clicking uh, action. That's I think is very unique to Seiko. I don't can't a uh, very very. Seldom do I find other brands uh, that make a bezel that feel like the Seiko ones. At least from my experience, maybe I'm just very limited, but I think I've had my fair share of watches, specifically dye watches, since it's probably my favorite genre of watches.
So anyways, kind of enough about that. We're going to definitely see more on this one. Has some strap options I have and uh, incoming and I think it's going to look pretty cool on this. So I look forward to sharing that. So far, the movement itself, not too bad. I think I'm averaging about minus four, minus five seconds, which is um, about as much as I would tolerate. I did actually try to open this because I was going to maybe regulate the, the watch if I could just to bump it to plus five so it'll even out or at least be a little bit more on the gain than uh, uh, minus or losing time. But it's really tight and the cheapy tools that I have that I usually do use and work, um, yeah, don't want to force it with those because those are uh, past a certain point of force when you're trying to turn it. Those things, those teeth aren't that secure or the the little uh, nubs that you have on that case back tool um, and they can slip out and potentially scratch the case when it does that. So, and it's it seems pretty tight like that. The only time I've ever had that, oh, I know my first watch, Seiko, that I got several years ago, which was a turtle, a blue dial one, blue bezel. That one was tight as hell too. And I had to bring it to some place to have them help me open it. And my Prospects, the cappuccino dial one, uh, I want to say it's the SBDC 105, but don't quote me on that. I haven't thought about that reference in a while, but it's the cappuccino dial one with the gilt. Um, that one was, I couldn't open either and I did scratch it a little bit. So I ended up having to take it to, a, again, a, a watchmaker to help me open it up. And I suspect I'll probably have to do the same here because it's really tight. Um, it really got the, uh, prospects lines tight. Well, yeah. Uh, anyways, we'll see. Uh, minus four, minus five isn't bad. And I have a lot of watches to rotate through anyway, so I can live with it for now. And we'll just see how it performs. I mean, this just came in a couple of days ago, and I only just started wearing it. This is my first day. I was on uh, my uh, other Seiko chronograph over the weekend, so I didn't get a chance. But I want to start it the week by giving this a run. But two other things came in today, and we'll look at that too. Sorry, I've been rambling a bit, but I wanted to just talk to you about this. I know this is not the new model, but I think people still have some interest in the Willards. And and uh, even this is an older model. I think this is one of the best colorways for it. I really like this olive drab that they have going on. It just seems very... Uh, I, I don't like to get the typical safe black classic uh, version that's almost a mirror replica of the original. I like to go off with something a little bit different and being that it has a bit of a military usage or history in its, in the in its prior you know iterations back in the vintage days at the 6105s uh, i think the this army or military green olive drab whatever you want to call it uh it's very suited for kind of giving you more of that feel too and, um, so, and, and just putting a twist on the original look. So, uh, anyways. Now, uh, what should we get into next? Um, let's go digital. So, uh, you have... Sorry, I just appeared for a bit. I have to pull this. I had recently made a video on uh, the titanium camo kit that I got for this watch. And uh, that's up a couple weeks ago, I think. And I decided to switch it off of it, put it back on here, because um, the the way the lugs were coming off of that, from the case through the bracelet, the angle that was off of here seemed a little bit wide. This... This, I don't know, this doesn't seem, this definitely comes down lower, like it doesn't seem like it goes out like this as much, it's more, you know, downwards, and so, uh, and there's definitely more flex in this, so it can, 
also fit better. So I decided to go back to this. And plus the titanium camo look wasn't in the end the look that I was really going for. It looked really cool with this red display and everything. Um, because it has a bit of gray and that has some bit of gray, actually quite a bit of gray in the camouflage pattern. But um I was looking for a look that reminded me of something that would be from one of my favorite sci-fi shows, The Expanse. Uh, something like what the Martian forces use, the uh, Martian Marines forces. Um, they have a lot of red accents, blacks or dark grays. Uh, if you know the show, you know, you know their armor and some of their ships. This, their whole uh, design philosophy and color palette revolves around a lot of red, blacks and grays. And uh, notably, also the the ship from the show, which has been the main ship from the show, the Rosinante, which has been repainted, which was some Martian ship, and then got repainted, and then got repainted again with similar red uh, screens. Um, I think it's updating right now, right at midnight. That's why this changed right here. It's not broken, <laughs> but um, yeah. Anyways, I just thought this actually looked closer to it. However, uh, so I took it off. Gonna sell it. Um, I think uh, anyone that's interested in it should let me know. Uh, otherwise, it's going on eBay. Probably gonna try to get, I don't know, 125 for it or something, because usually these kits go for about 160 and you may have to wait a bit, uh, especially since getting it from AliExpress. Uh, can take a while. Um, although, this actually came in pretty surprisingly fast, like within a, it took about roughly a week. And this, that the other titanium kit had to have been almost a month, I think. Maybe just shy of that, three or three weeks. Uh, not quite as long as some other people have waited for things off of AliExpress, I think. But anyways, uh, what this is here is another titanium kit. And I could have gotten this for a bit, it costs about the same, around 160-ish. Uh, but uh, I could have gotten the same look, but in stainless steel, which would have been heavier, which I don't really want to add weight to a G-Shock, uh, but that would have cost about uh, quite a bit less. Like, I think they run around 30, 40 something dollars, depending on where you buy it from. Not all that much. I think probably at least half. I don't think it's more than 50 or 60 dollars or something like that of the titanium version, but... If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do titanium, keep it light, and also I believe the original version of this kit that I got, you know, the actual model that it's from, uh, is titanium. So, I'm going to set this aside, and we'll see what we got here. And there's some extra spring bars, some screws, because um, when you take, much like the other kit, the, use, the, the kit that this is, I think normally has black screws in these areas, these corners that hold the the whole thing together, or at least the module to the to the case, uh, and I guess the the straps too. This is the main uh, locking, you know, securing uh, hardware, I guess. So you could still use the silver, but you probably want to go black, especially since this kit is basically black colored. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna need that. And what we got here is what is it? Hello. Uh it is the virtual armor version of the uh titanium kit. What whatever, the virtual armor uh mod or kit uh look. Um which I really like when it came out. Um, I was like, wow, that's super cool. Like, you can see everything, and I like how everything was labeled. Just pop this out really quickly. Let's see. Uh, I was worried that it might not have the text, but I'm glad it did, because I think, I think for legal reasons, they photoshopped out at least G-Shock, and sometimes they also photo out protection, and just make it look like it's a sterile blank, um, case. But... I'm pretty sure I knew that it wasn't going to be because some pictures of people that have the product show that they have it on here. So let's unwrap this so we can get a better look, shall we? And I think they did a pretty good job of mimicking it. I think 
uh, from what I can tell, diamond light carbon coating. We'll, we'll see if that's true or not. I don't know. It's the way, how well these come out to being basically, I think, nearly if not actually one to one to the real thing is amazing because I'm just thinking they actually get these from the actual factory. <laughs> I wonder what they did here. They did something here to install the uh, this cushion here, which is kind of unusual. Did they just tape it in there in the back? I don't know. But uh, I think, well, in, th in this sense, maybe this is not true resin cushioning in here. It's just the look. There's several versions of this kit, depending on which module and watch base that you're using. This is a... Uh, what is this gwb 5600 ar to be exact for adrenaline red the, the dial it's that red color which i think is pretty cool and i think you get this on here now especially now that it has you know this black and gray going much like the dial and then this red accent for the showing the cushion hopefully this won't be an issue when i wash the watch of it coming loose or somehow you gotta watch that but anyway i was saying there are other versions of this watch where um, this kit that you can get for different modules and maybe you don't have the tough solar or Bluetooth and you have like the one that's battery powered. And I think the module also has differentiations where I've seen it where you can see on the website, but they this red cushioning thing is an actual piece that they have on the inside. There is actually a cushion, but you put that around the module, I think, at least the module butts up against it uh, too. Uh, but I think for whatever reason, this particular model, it just needs to be kind of like this kind of um, fate. <laughs> uh, well, I suppose they're just showing it off as red. Sorry about the getting off focus here, which is cool. Um, but if you take this apart, I mean, there is actually like a resin kind of... Uh, uh what is it cushioning around the module anyways but it's just black so you know it's not really like it's not there uh but anyways i think they did a pretty good job i mean you got the text here light and all the functionality I'm curious if the original one, this might scratch easy, we'll see if it was engraved or not. That I'm not too sure about. If the original was actually engraved down like how this one is, and also my titanium is actually kind of engraved into it, it's that inset, you know. Um, I'm going to have to look that up. But I believe I saw, there's only one or two videos of this kit up online right now not many people have i guess gotten it or at least shown it and the one that i the two that i've seen and i believe they might be both one and the same person according to what i can remember from the um, the author whoever the uh the youtube channel is um i think it's the same person but they've uh, compared it next to a real one and from what i can tell just about everything about it looks on the exterior at least looks one to one so um it's probably is like this um hang me oh, sorry kind of bugs me I gotta get rid of that okay so let's take a look at um at this here and and this basically is just like how it is I'm going to stick it on here because we will get to putting this all together soon. And it should be using spring bars inside here as well to uh, size the bracelet, which isn't too hard. You can get some tools right here to do all that stuff too. And as you can see, it seems pretty... Sorry, I'm looking off camera. It's pretty good. Some markings here. I don't know if it's just from the sticker adhesive. Yeah, I think so. Some of the stuff is kind of rubbing off. There shouldn't be really anything bad marks on it. 
and all these I believe all these prints are pretty much authentic to the actual one yeah, there's a little bit of a, of a scratch or something maybe right here but it shouldn't be an issue because after the the first three all of these are the same so i just got to find the choice ones that look good that probably remove i'll probably remove these two because this one has one here and this one has one right on this link on this part so i can probably ace these two which is fine because i believe on this side i usually lose two two of these but um i gotta look back to my pictures but usually i do two and one on this side but if I'm not mistaken, the last time with the titanium kit, I did it. It actually worked out to be even. I think I took out two and two. Um, because it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, two. I don't know. I got to look at my old pictures of this. Um, which will show it. And let's take this off. Just see if it's um, A-OK -okay in terms of the finish. Hopefully it doesn't have uh, any kind of uh, markings like the other, that first side that I, I unwrapped does. Uh, looks better. I don't see any, uh, any no, premature wear marks. I mean, for the price and the feel and the general look, yeah, it's pretty much in my book, 99% there, at least aesthetically. And in terms of being titanium, everything it's uh, pretty darn close. And you can see it's also just like the uh, the actual one. It's they hollowed these things out here, which is cool. Now, my, and they actually did that on here too, as you can see on the case. Those little circles there. I think that is like that on there. And um, I don't think you're supposed to see straight through the case through here, though. It's not a complete hole that goes through this and whatever module that you have in here i think it does just this is open but it'll be just black in there and um uh, i don't no i'm sure there wasn't red inside these as well so um what was going to do yeah so that should work out pretty good it says it says titanium right there so full titanium, let's expand, all that good stuff. And yeah, I do think this will be better because I was thinking before, maybe I should have gone the titanium, the all titanium. Well, they're both all titanium, but the, the one that's black or very dark gray, the non camouflage one, but it would have looked so similar to what this is. It's like, um, from a visual standpoint, it's not going to make all that much of a difference. You're right. So I was like, nah, I don't want to waste my time and money getting something that essentially looks like how it is stock. Now this, on the other hand, you know, it's got a bit of brushing and, and of course, all this nice print. And I believe it's actually, it's very finely laser etched too, like I think the camouflage one is. Yeah, my concern is hopefully this, nothing will make this come off somehow over time like heat like will mess up with the uh, adhesive that you know make this thing slide off i don't know time will tell we'll see i think it'll be butt up against here with the module anyways once it's secure it's not gonna really it shouldn't go have anywhere to go so i'll be fine i just hope that uh when i wash it or whatever it's easy to get, keep, make sure this inside here keeps clean and and uh doesn't I don't know, build up with gunk. That's probably the my main concern about having uh, that opening in this area here. Not so much these guys, because it's just, you can imagine it's just going to be black in those areas. But just from a, kind of, oh, I know, the shadow is kind of hard to see. But you get an idea, and I think it'll work pretty cool. Let's see if I turn on the light, maybe it'll. Okay, so that's that. Um, I was going to say something else about this. Oh, I thought perhaps this might have came also with this kit with a bracelet 
you can also buy these things separate you can buy just this or just this and the other thing was um i thought that this came with the buttons i don't know if the person that i saw that ordered one i don't know if he actually ordered it separately and just got the whole kit together at once or did his the one that he got um actually come with it i was looking online i th from what i can tell most of the kits if not all that are like the one i got uh they're just this bezel and uh, whatever matches uh components matches the particular model that you're gonna uh you know fit it to and so some some details might be a little bit different but essentially it's just a case and the bracelet and i don't think it comes with the matching buttons which are black and uh, most notably the um the uh, light button is has like a red accent on it i think either a ring around it and or like a red dot um that would have been cool it's about i looked it up it's about 30 bucks i don't know if i really want to spend 30 bucks to change the the buttons i might i'm sure it'll look fine with just the silver ones for now and we'll see how that is uh but um you know if i uh, change that over later then then um uh, yeah we'll see when that happens you know it's not that much to do but i've never i'm just kind of worried about opening this thing up to try to change the uh, the buttons never been done but obviously there must be a way to do it and it can't be that hard right uh, but we'll see uh, for now i don't have it so and i'm just gonna kind of roll with it with just the uh, silver buttons for now i think that will um, be passable for the time being so um i'm not gonna get that on right now oops sorry um let's move on to i'm gonna probably do a separate video uh maybe right after this just showing the installing this and hopefully everything comes together right uh yeah so now we'll move on to this here um i like their their colors their design uh very original designs great use of color in my opinion some of you think they might be a little bit wild uh maybe too trying to be too trendy with her um you know color combinations but i don't know for me they work for the most part and um i dig it and they got good quality and this is the i actually got the field watch and uh, we'll take a look at it and so most of the watches so far i only had a chronograph I've seen it in my other videos and postings with the bernina Chronograph Sport, really like that one. I'm pretty happy with that. And this is one of their fuel watches. And they have three colorways. I think they've only always had three. Um, I'm trying to remember them. One is the Exmoor. This is, I got the Le Monde. And there is one more, which has kind of a, a white dial and maybe like a dark blue or black i think it's dark blue like center ring accent um and here's mine so it's just locked in here with some buttons and i'll pop this out and this is what it comes with uh, let's see i like to put i know i'm going to need to take this off anyways so let's take off i should have inspected it well actually i did open it up earlier this isn't actually the fresh unboxing and you can see it's already running and this has the dark blue dial and uh has the kind of a brighter blue running seconds hand with i would say it's it's kind of a cream or fotina look but i consider the fill on the tip you know the loom on the hands to be kind of like a yellow and then obviously the pointer date which is pretty cool is in red i don't know i have this thing for primary colors i made my own field watch mod with a seiko skx a while back i call it the firefly mod it was all black seracoded which was this was a time when all that stuff wasn't readily available you had to have that all 
pretty much custom made but now you can get all sorts of cases and like bronze and and probably black dlc and there's all sorts of you know cases now too um which before you would have to find some way to cannibalize another watch and that hopefully it's um, compatible with the movement and and has the spacing and all that stuff for the hands and so forth but anyways i digress so this is fuel watch and i don't know if i ever mentioned it on the channel but i've also i think i mentioned it in some comments depending on what fuel watch video or posting or talking about uh but i've never been a, i mean i like fuel watches but i've never been able to submit to any uh, at least none of the classic ones like the Hamilton Feel Khaki. The, uh, I think Benrus is very similar. You know, you're very typical uh, time only. Maybe there's a date, but usually it's time only. Uh, Arabic numeral is very clean, plain, basic. Even the um, that new Ranger, right? The uh, uh, from Tudor. Uh, it's just a three six nine twelve. Um, it looks too basic and maybe safe and boring to me. So much like a Flieger, uh, the classic A and B style at least. I like those, but I can never commit to them because they just seem a little too basic and generic. And they can be had for as cheap as right around 100 bucks, maybe even less, depending on where you buy it from. It's well, it's well over thousands, right? For some of the, the design, basically, uh, it's almost identical to a lot of other, you know, between brands and uh, the, I don't, I can't justify a super high price point. And again, the design's too basic. But anyways, uh, if I'm going to do a fuel watch, it's gotta be something a bit different. And there's a lot of options out there, especially in the micro brand space. Uh, but in terms of, uh, you know, big brands, I said, I guess the closest I've come and actually gone was the, uh, um, well, I had, uh, before I got this, the Alpinist, there was like a, a similar model, which is like an Alpinist, but it was a little bit larger. It was, I had a cream dial version of it. Um, I don't even remember the, the model number is. Oh, I had it for a short while, but I guess the closest thing I had was the, the blue Alpinist, uh, the Hodinkee special that got everyone up in arms because, you know, that, that, that got kind of ugly, but we're not going to go there. But uh, that was one I had. Uh, and I would say it's an unusual one. It's not your typical feel what style. There's a bit more going on with it, especially with that compass and extra crown and all that. Um, but anyways, I ended, ended up selling it because I didn't think it was worth the money that they were going for. So I'd rather see what I could get for it and apply it to something else that I think would be wor worth it. But um, so that's what happened with that one. Uh skip a couple years now right since that came out that must have been at least what two three years at least by now this is uh uh just beginning of august 2022 um and this model isn't new they've had it since i think at least last year 2021 well mid-year so it was about a year ago and they sold out and they recently brought these back out and i was like i always like between all the variants, I always like this one because of the primary colors. And um, it's a good size, 38.5 or 7, something like that. And it's actually pretty much the same dimensions as their, one of the latest uh, diving watches, the, uh, what do they call it, the Aquamatics. And there's about four different variations. Um, I like the crib bar, the strong red accent bezel. But anyways, it's basically the same case, but those have a routine bezels, but they're actually thinner than the dive watches are. And I think by just a, not even barely a millimeter difference, I think, but uh, uh, it is, this is just ever so slightly thicker. And I think uh, they both have 200 meters of water resistance and screw down crown and all that. And no case back, like or no display case back. But I think this one had to be made slightly thicker because of the pointer date. And I think that was kind of cool. So that's another feature about this. It makes it a little bit different. It's, it's got a pointer date instead of a date window. And I like that. And um, I don't know. This is one of the more conservative mix of colors. But I think there's just enough here to pop. And on my uh, 
seven inch wrist or so. It's, I consider it 6.875 to be exact. Uh, I think it works pretty nicely. I'm trying to give you some distance to see. This is one, the, and it's pretty good value, I think. It's running a Salita SW220, I believe. Sapphire crystal, uh, screw down crown. Again, 200 meters water resist. Yeah, they have, it's not a screw down back, but that's okay. I mean, if they guarantee 20 meters, 200 meters of water resist, like this uh, kind of uh, case back, I'm fine with it. Uh, that's more than enough. And, um, and I think they do that just to make sure that this will always be uh, level. You know, it's not that a tilt or or even upside down when you turn it over to to see it. So that's fine. Of course, they always have the trademark uh, bronze crown uh, that's signed, and uh, looks almost like a no date. That's why it looks pretty clean, even though it has one has four hands. But that uh, I don't think. It really interferes with anything. This adds just that little extra bit of visual interest. And yeah, I think it works pretty good. Um, the room on this is not bad either. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it with such strong light. Let me see. If I turn it. Yeah, I got to bump up the ISO, but... We'll do a loom such thing another day. So, um, this is the other one. And so, yeah, for good value, I think the quality of the watch, what you get here, and uh, much like the dive watch, for just under a thousand, it comes with two extra straps. So, you have a pretty thick, uh, it's going to require some break in period. You can see it's pretty stiff but I think it's one of those ones if you really do wear it and give it a chance to break in it'll probably get you know get formed nicely to your wrist shape eventually and have a nice uh, worn broken in look and I think it'll last a pretty good while um, uh, this uh, I believe Halloween leather and it's brown which I think works fine with a blue dial Comes with a matching blue um, um, NATO strap, blue stitching. Um, these are not adjustable, but we'll see. And they give you some quick release spring bars. And I think the whole system is designed to be easily interchangeable because everything is, has quick release spring bars. The, the little strap here, you can see. Uh, for these, for the NATO, so once you pop that off, you just quickly put these in and slip it in, and you're good to go, which is good. I, I, you know, I think more people, I've been doing this recently too, but I think a lot of people should consider getting some uh, quick release spring bars. Uh, look around, get some good quality ones. Uh, this looks pretty good. They look like a pretty decent um, thickness to them and, and all that. You don't want to get them that too skinny and scrawny looking, and they might kind of be a little bit loose in the, the lug holes too. They're too small or skinny, potentially. But anyways, look around, get some good quality ones, and I think it's a great way to uh, help you interchange uh, straps to from a two-piece that already has that, or even such as the included uh, Jubilee style bracelet here. Uh, it looks, it's all brushed. This does have a butterfly clasp, but I think the links are short enough. Sorry for the focus. It's a butterfly clasp. The links are short enough where you should be able to get a decent uh, custom fit. I do think it'll, it could potentially fall in a slightly uh, weird space where perhaps one less might be too tight and one more might be just that little bit extra too loose. But, I mean, it is what it is. You just pick your poison and, and just... Uh, <laughs> Uh, go with it, and uh, but I think I think it should be doable, uh, and it also has uh, quick release um, solid end links. Yep. So these are solid, right? Yeah. 
Uh, and this is actually the same style as the one that you might get with the uh, their dive wash aquamatics because they basically share the same uh, basis. It's just um, the movement inside and the way it's, you know, the type of watch it is, is a little bit different too. And you can see it has an integrated, very subtle, but um, this side actually ever so slightly comes out more than that side. I don't know if you can see that probably right here. Very slight, but it's just enough to just give it a little added protection for the crown. Granted, it's rather minimal <laughs> and, uh, uh, as far as crown guards go that are kind of integrating the case. It's not like, uh, I don't have it here, it's not like like this guy. This goes all the way to the end of the crown. No, but uh, I, I think it's kind of nice that they at least thought about it. And uh, it's, it's a pretty sleek way to do it. So, I think that's it. Um, this has gone pretty long, per usual. Um, but uh, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So, just wanted to share that with you. So, I am probably, well, get this already lightly sized and ready to go as soon as I can get this up in rotation, which will be probably right after this. If not after that, we'll see. Uh, I might switch to that just just to temporarily just to uh, just to go from analog to digital, just to change it up and then go back to analog. Uh, probably just right after that one. But uh, yeah, someone give this a good run. Uh, see if it holds a pretty consistent minus four or minus five seconds a day. Uh, I like that it improved, but I think. If there's any so-called settling in period, I feel that most watches will either slow down rather than end up speeding up more, right? It just, it just seems more likely that that would happen if if there was to be that kind of a change in the uh, daily deviation and, and general performance of a watch to uh, settle in. But all right, that's it. So... Uh, stay tuned. I uh, hope you like this mix of stuff that I have. It's just none of these are given or sponsored in any way. Uh, I just like these brands and uh, options. Oh, if I, I got this. The shop is uh, G Refit. I think that's the name of the shop uh, that I got this from on AliExpress. So if you're curious where I got it, that's where I got it from. I didn't mention that on my titanium version when I had it. It's been about a year because I think shortly after that, I couldn't find it. I thought maybe they had gone down. But just recently, I kind of went back and somehow found it. Uh, I guess I went back to my old uh, email and I clicked the link to go find the product. And apparently the, the shops do there and then they had other stuff. And oh, they do have a, a stainless or silver version of this, which is interesting because they never made one, but you get an option that's uh, different than the original. But I think it looks better in black anyways. Silver's all right. It's, I think it's a little bit too bright for this style. And um, I don't think the print or, I don't know, something about it didn't look quite right to me. And I think this should be in a darker color. But just letting so you know, but they do have like those, uh, was it the Tokyo Night, like the purple version and and the uh, rainbow, the, the one that has all the different color titanium links um and just about anything that casio has put out as a special edition uh at least some of the more popular ones uh they have a version of it uh, some somewhat and they have some stuff that they haven't put out at all that's kind of uh original in terms of a, a colorway that they may not have actually used before um i don't know eh, at least source is weird I don't usually like going on it because uh, there's so much of the same stuff. How do you know which one is good, authentic, uh, reliable, um, has decent customer service, if that exists? Uh, you know, all that stuff. It's, you just kind of have to go through it and, and kind of see if you can gauge which one is good. But there are some people out there that have done reviews and uh, can name some places that they like to go to that are... Uh, they find reliable, but for me, I haven't had any problems with G Refit. It's actually the same one that Jody from um, Just One More Watch went to. That's how I found it. He did a, a 
a G-Shock mod. I don't think it was the titanium camo or it might have been just a titanium, if not some other metal, uh, you know, G-Shock mod. I forget, it's been quite a while, but uh, that's, I followed his link to find, look around and uh, then I found that titanium kit and that's how I found that shop. But anyways, uh, that's it. It's getting long. I'll talk to you later. Bye.